Just a few more seconds. All right, the clock is ticking. Tick, tick, tick. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, the meeting is yours, Mr. Completi. Let me know if you right. need anything. All right, thanks, Ken. <clears throat> <clears throat> Welcome to the Lyon Township Planning Commission meeting for Monday, July 13th, 2020. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United States, United States, States, States of, America, of America and to the Republic for which it stands, for which it stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. All right, very good. Kelly, if you take roll, please. <clears throat> Patricia Carconi? Yes. Jim Chuck? Yes. Michael Completi? Here. Stephen Hoffman? Oh, he's not here yet. Ron Pennington? Yes. Kurt Radke? Here. And Carl Town. Here. All right, very good. If we could have a motion to excuse Mr. Hoffman. Motion to excuse Mr. Hoffman. Support. Motion by Mr. Chuck. Support by Ms. Carcone. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Do we have to do roll call? <clears throat> Approve. I, I think I'm it's sorry. okay. Okay. Patricia Carcone? Yes. Jim Chuck? Yes. Michael Confliti? Yes. Ron Pennington? Yes. Kurt Radke? Yes. Carl Town? Yes. All right, very good. Uh, approval of tonight's agenda? Motion to approve as submitted. By Mr. Chuck? Support, Carl. Support. Um, Kelly, if you take roll. Patricia Carconi? Yes. Ron Pennington? Yes. Jim Chuck? Yes. Kurt Radke? Yes. Michael Confliti? Yes. Carl Town? Yes. All right, very good. <clears throat> Approval of consent agenda June 22nd, the 2020 uh, minutes. Make a motion to approve. Support. Approved by Mr. Town. Support by Mr. Chuck. Uh, Kelly, roll, please. Carl Town? Yes. Kurt Radke? Yes. Ron Pennington? Ron? Yes. Michael Confliti? Yes. Jim Chuck? Yes. Patricia Carcone? Yes. All right, very good. Um, comments from the public? Anything that's not on the agenda tonight? Ken, do we have anyone? Yeah, so we do have a couple of phone callers. I'd like to remind the phone callers, if you would like to speak, uh, press star nine on your T-pad. And we, that will, will, we do have a public hearing coming up. I don't know if you're aware tonight. Okay. Uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I, I was just gonna say uh, for the callers, if they press star nine, we'll be alerted uh, that they would like to speak. <clears throat> And uh, we will unmute their audio and, again, remind them that uh, they'll need to state their name and address for the record. Uh, Mr. Completi, I do see one of the callers has their virtual hand raised. Uh, caller with the last four digits of 5662. Uh, we will unmute your line. Uh, feel free to uh, make your comment. Again, please state your name and address for the record. Go ahead, caller. Judy Roscoe, 25700 Milford Road. South Lion 48178. Mm -hmm. I live, my property, hi, <laughs> hooks directly to this subdivision that's going in back there, okay? We are on the Blackwood drain. We have mm -hmm. issues with all kinds of flooding on our property. We've had issues with when they dewatered wells, uh, they dewatered the property out back. Our wells were drying up. I would like to see a retention pond. And if those houses are going to be as close as Thistle Lane in Lyon Township, we're going to have another Detroit subdivision, which is ridiculous. We're not out here to live in that kind of an area. Traffic is going to be horrendous. I know the roads aren't yours, but you're putting people on them, and I'm worried about trespassing on my property and lawsuits. 
I don't uh, okay, think we should have this much of a concentration of homes on that property. Sorry. Okay. Th Thank thanks, you. Judy. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. <clears throat> and at this uh, point, we have no other uh, callers okay. with their hands raised, Mr. Completi. All right. Okay, very good. Um, um, no DDA report tonight. Um, we're going to start, uh, Brian, if you'd start us off, um, AP 20-16B, maybe you can combine AP 2016A also, Hickory Creek site plan and special land use. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I will do that. I'll run through um, our two letters uh, dated July 6th, one for the site plan review and one for special land use. So. Um, you may be familiar with the property. Um, on the I can barely hear you, Brian. How about now? Any better? Much yes. better. That's better. Uh, the yep. property is a, just under 30 acres. Brian, we can hardly hear you. Again. Seriously. Is that any better? There. Yeah, if you don't move. <laughs> okay, I took the uh, headphones off. Um, That's better. Okay. Okay, so um, the subject property this evening is uh, about 30 acre parcel east of Milford Road and south of 11 Mile. Uh, this is just south of the 11 Mile uh, par parcel that the township owns. Uh, and uh, you may be familiar with this property because um, originally it was intended to be developed for about 14 lots using a road that has since been constructed since it was originally envisioned uh, several years ago. Uh, the road itself got a variance for road length to be constructed to the length that it is at. Um, and I series of events led us to where we're at today. So um, the initial impression on the property was that there were uh, enough land divisions through, this, through the state's land division act that uh, 14 lots would be possible through just lot splits, traditional lot splits. Uh, once we got into the process with the assessor, it was uncovered that only 10 lots would be feasible and if any additional development were to occur, it would have to be through site condominium. Uh, the applicants have gone back to the drawing board and said, well, if we're, we've got to do some site condos for a portion of this, it only makes sense that we put all of the lots under the same umbrella. Uh, and in doing so, they could actually get a few additional lots uh, onto the property. The uh, parallel plan, which is titled the existing zoning plan in, your, uh, in the plan package, indicates that the property can be developed reasonably with up to 21 lots under existing zoning. So that's what the plan um, utilizes as is its base number of lots. Um, however, the applicants have chose to use the average lot size mechanism, which allows the lots to be uh, a bit smaller, a bit more narrow, uh, but preserves a chunk of open space. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Um, you'll note that uh, there's a large existing pond in the southeast corner of the site, uh, and much of the land around that area is intended to be utilized for open space for the community. So you can see along the drain uh, which borders the east, northeast lot line. Uh, there's a, a fair amount of existing vegetation that would remain through this process. Um, so ultimately, the, the plan mimics what was approved previously for a detention basin to start uh, filtering out some of that stormwater before the existing pond. So um, a bit of a... Uh, confusing backstory. Um, so what we're considering today is using, utilizing the exact same road that has already been constructed. Uh, Oakland County has uh, 
been out and inspecting the road throughout the construction process of it and intent, intends to uh, intends to take over responsibility for the road. So this will be a public road. Um, in terms of the open space and public amenities, so one of the, the uh, standards that the township has for average lot size developments uh, is this requirement for open space. So in allowing the lots to be slightly smaller than under conventional zoning, um, the applicants can utilize that any difference between the zoning ordinance and what is proposed and saving that as open space. Uh, one of the things that we always talk about in these types of developments is whether or not that open space should be accessible to the residents, whether it should have um, active or passive recreational elements associated with it. Um, so one thing that we would like you to talk about this evening is um, there are no paths um, to the open space. It is technically accessible from the road, um, kind of circumventing the detention basin near the cul-de-sac. Um, but we would like some direction from the Planning Commission on whether or not um, this preservation of open space is a good solution here. Um, as I mentioned before, I think the fact that it includes some of the existing vegetation along the drain is a positive. Um, it keeps a good natural buffer. Um, this area around the existing pond could technically be utilized by some sort of pathway or, or just residents informally walking the area. Uh, but again, I'd like the Planning Commission to discuss that. Uh, <clears throat> on the topic of pathways, there is no sidewalk proposed along 11 Mile, which is something that we would typically expect of a residential development. Um, at this location, there are no, uh, the nearest sidewalk network is at Milford Road, about a quarter of a mile to the west. Uh, but heading east down 11 Mile, there is no sidewalk. Um, we don't really see a lot of potential for expanding the sidewalk network to the east down 11 mile, other than the fact that somewhere down the line, it's feasible for 11 mile park to be developed. Um, and this could potentially match up to a network, a sidewalk network in that regard. Um, <clears throat> there is a landscape plan associated with the design package, which complies with all of our ordinance standards. There's some, uh, there is some light screening along 11 Mile Road. There's a street trees that are proposed uh, along the entirety of, uh, of the public road. And then uh, the plan does also note ex existing tree stands that are to be retained for the time being. However, when some of these lots where the existing trees are located today get developed, it's possible and likely that a portion of those tree stands will be removed. Um, and they're permitted to be removed under our ordinance, so we don't necessarily see a complication with, uh, with those standing during the development. To be eligible for the average lot size uh, mechanism in the ordinance, the, uh, the plan has to meet several criteria. The first is compatibility with the adopted plans and ordinances of the township. Uh, I mentioned density before, uh, and even though we've, we received the comment about the development being too dense, um, then the 21 lots would comply or would be able to be achieved under traditional zoning. So we find that it is compatible with um, our R1 density standards and so we feel that it achieves that, uh, that criteria. Uh, all of the zoning standards we find are uh, achieved through the plan. Uh, setbacks are, are appropriate for the site. Um, it does propose uh, a total of 40 feet for side setbacks. 
those are broken into 15 and 25 foot setbacks. So the homes will be offset a little bit. Um, however, we note that the, uh, the ordinance does allow for this offset. Um, in terms of impact on the township, uh, we do not see uh, any negative impacts above and beyond traditional development patterns for the site. Um, you know, 21 lots, we're looking at about 210 vehicle trips per day uh, based on a, a 10 trip per day average for a single family home. Uh, the lots themselves, uh, particularly along the entry drive, uh, I'm talking about lots 15 through 21 and one um, all the way down to uh, 10 or 11, um, don't really have any directly adjacent neighbors. Um, I say that um, understanding that 17 through 21 do butt up to the Western property line. However, these are pretty deep lots. You can note the building envelope is deep. Um, and so there is pretty adequate room for a new home to be constructed with some adequate screening along the Western property line. Um, the, uh, another standard that I'd like to hit on is um, access to the property itself. So uh, we don't permit the average lot size mechanism to be used where the planned right of way is less than 86 feet. As part of this uh, plan, there is 60 feet of right of way being proposed uh, to be dedicated to the county along the northern border. And so at this location, you will have uh, about 93 feet of right of way. Uh, so we find that it meets the ordinance for that uh, feature, or for that criteria. Uh, and then in terms of natural features, you know, the layout is, is pretty minimally impactful on the existing features that are there. The wetland setback is shown on all of the plans and that wetland setback does not encroach into uh, the lots in any meaningful way. You'll note that there is a small portion of the wetland on the very south side of the lot here. And those lot lines are contoured to follow the wetland boundary. Um, and then there are Excuse me. Uh, there are several spots uh, along the uh, the eastern boundary here where the wetland setback will have to be adhered to um, during construction in terms of the location of decks or anything like that. Um, there is the wetland setback. There's also a utility easement. If you can follow my cursor here, uh, running through lots five and terminating here at lot two, there's a utility easement um, that if it's possible to make some slight adjustments, we would prefer that. Um, what we end up uh, dealing with on the administrative level is a lot of times these homes are built within the building envelope as they should be. Uh, a resident purchases the home, wants to build a deck on the back, and then runs into a potential easement for utilities. Um, and this one here is, uh, it really doesn't follow the property line. And so we do foresee some impacts there. Um, it may be a situation where educating the buyer of the home is adequate, um, but that's not always the case. So it's something that we wanna look out for. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, those are our comments in terms of site plan review. Uh, as I mentioned, this is subject to special land use review mm -hmm. as an average mm -hmm. lot size development and a site condominium. Um, so again, we have the public hearing tonight. We can uh, take any comments that we hear from the public in addition to the one comment that we received during the general public comment section. Uh, but we find in general that the review standards for special land use uh, approval are complied with in this instance as well. Things like traffic, um, 
we think are appropriate in terms of the, the overall size of the lot. We don't see a lot of impact to adjacent properties. Um, you know, these are single family homes. The lot size is about 30,000 square feet or greater. So we're talking two thirds uh, to three quarters of an acre for each one of these. They are relatively close to uh, our standards and the density is what we expect. Uh, we did call for some clarification in terms of uh, the potential sale price of, of lots or homes in the development. That's something that we asked for clarity on in terms of the economic well-being of the community. Um, we like to see where we're at in terms of sale prices to make sure that we are covering, covering our bases for a broad variety of price ranges for people to move into the township. Um, okay, that being said, we, uh, our letters note, we would recommend some clarity on a few things. We would like the Planning Commission to comment on the passive pathway uh, in the open space of the development. Um, talk a bit about the pathway requirement along 11 Mile Road. Um, we'd like some clarity as to whether it's possible to move the stormwater easement on the rear of the of lots two, three, and four. Um, and we'd like some clarity on the impact of the 25 foot vegetative strip um, on several lots on the south side of the development. Uh, one final comment that I do have is, I'm gonna hop back to the other plan here. Uh, on lot 18, which is on the west side of Hickory Creek Lane, is the location of the pump station. The properties will be served by a, uh, a connection to the township's uh, sanitary sewer system, but will require a pump station. And we'll, uh, obviously I'll defer to Rick in terms of adequacy of the pump station, but we do have a concern that the pump station lid and the maintenance drive, as they're shown, are located within or right adjacent to this residential lot. Uh, this is an existing house today that is noted to be to remain on site. Um, however, these pump stations do require a fair amount of upkeep and general maintenance and annual maintenance. Um, we do have some concerns that they can give off odors if not maintained properly and so it's not we don't view it as an ideal situation to have the pump station and the manhole on the residential lot. So I'd like you to comment on that uh, once you understand a bit more about the engineering perspective from Rick. Uh, we think all of these things that we've noted are, uh, are pretty easily, they're easy to address in some capacity. <laughs> we don't find them barriers to the overall design of the property. Uh, we think it is appropriate for the site, and therefore we would recommend site plan approval subject to the Planning Commission, uh, the Planning Commission's satisfaction on those items. Uh, we'd also recommend that any, uh, any motion made on the site plan be conditioned on special land use approval granted by the Township Board. Uh, I can take any questions that you might have at this point. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Any questions for Brian? Yeah, Mike, this is Jim Chuck. I have a couple. Hey, Jim. Sure. So, Brian, if I understand you correctly, let's stay with lot 18. There's an existing home to remain. Is that there correct? Is. Correct. And then we're going to have a pump station up front, correct? Correct. And they're still going to build a home on lot 18? No, our general ordinances or our zoning ordinances would preclude them from building a second home on that lot. It okay. would just be included within all of the site condominium uh, documents as lot 18. Um, that's the structures that are on the site comply with all of the setbacks. So we wouldn't have any 
concerned with it. Basically treating it as a built out lot in the development. So he's got 21, but in reality, he's building 20 because 18 is going to stay as is, correct? That's correct. Then I have one other question. I, if we go down, I believe it's between lot seven and eight. Is that, uh, I, I'm assuming that is a path to the open space. Am I correct? And what is that between seven and eight? Yeah, there is, um, the township maintains um, infiltration beds on the property to the south. And so this is an easement to allow the township to access those beds in the case of maintenance or any need to access those. But then it really, it just ends, correct? Uh, it doesn't really go anywhere. Like what I'm looking at, is there a way lot seven could be a little bit smaller and would that be then a walkway or a path over to the open space? Um, I believe that lot is sized large enough to accommodate that. Um, we'll have to leave it up to the applicant whether they would make that change or not. Because, I mean, you wanted input, and that's that's really what I saw. That that um, that western portion of, of this of this uh, horseshoe or this 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 21 homes, uh, you know, I'd like to have to see them have a way to get over to the open space, which is primarily uh, on the eastern portion of of, of this uh, development. So those are my couple comments and the question that I had. So thank you. Thanks, Mr. Jim. Chairman. This is yes, Kurt. Sir. Can I, uh, on Jim, Mr. Chuck, Mr. Chuck's um, discussion on lot seven, Brian, what is that easement gonna, how is that gonna be maintained? Is that gonna be blacktop? And how wide would that be? It is a 15 foot wide gravel driveway as it's proposed. Um, it does say that there's a gate. Um, so, and it is showing the gate here at the Southern property line. So technically it would be accessible from the road all the way to the gate to anyone, even though it is specifically for maintenance. Okay, and um, if we were gonna make that, if we were gonna use that path and, and take 10, eight or 10 feet off the back of seven, it, they should be consistent, right? I mean, that would be, you wouldn't, you want some kind of a nice path. Just a thought, okay. I'm sorry, I misspoke. I said 15 feet wide, it's 18 feet wide. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's, that's enough, Mr. Petty, for myself. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, so, Brian, this is Mike. The um, When you talk about passive pathway, is that, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I have mixed feelings on them, quite honestly. The, you know, if, if you're to put in something like a wood chip path, um, they just end up being maintained really poorly, you know. Um, but I don't feel that even an asphalt path or something like that is really in keeping with the character of this this area that they're trying to preserve. So I, I right. don't feel like that's the solution either. Um. Brian, okay. can I All ask right. for clarification? Are you saying it's not a good plan for the easement or for the walking path that we would propose possibly? Well, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understood the question. The way I understood the question was, how do I feel about having a, a walking path of some sort through the open space? And while I think it's a good idea uh, and certainly achievable through an easement if you had to, or even uh, shortening up the southern border of this lot seven, because lot seven is pretty large. It's over an acre. So per our ordinance, it could lose some space. So the actual access to the open space could either be accommodated through the south here or um, you could run a path off of this gravel drive here. Um, I just, I don't love wood chip paths and I don't feel like a asphalt pathway is the right fit for the development. So I, I don't know what the ideal solution would be uh, to provide that or if it's even necessary in these. I mean, they're, 
They're still fairly large lots. Um, it's an open ditch type system. You know, these are going to have some rural feel to the lot. Um, maybe it's best left as just natural open space. And if, if a pathway or a trail um, is created naturally, then maybe that's the way to go. Brian, yeah. another question relative to that. Would that common area around the pond be maintained were seated in the grass mode so it'd be a nice area that somebody could walk without a path is there a way to if we're going to do that is there a way to make that mandatory well you so the planning commission has the ability to request um or require an amenity so if you feel that mowing it is an appropriate way to create a pathway or something like that, you do have that ability or that authority. Um, but as it's proposed right now, it is, uh, the notes do not indicate that it would be maintained or manicured lawn. So it would be truly natural. Um, this is Jim again, see Annette kind of, kind of bodes back well to what the uh, original uh, call was about, even security in that. Uh, well, Brian, couldn't that be put into the uh, the HOA agreement, uh, the deeds that they have to maintain it? So either you get somebody inside to cut it or they get a, a, you know, a landscaping company to come cut it. Couldn't that be put into the, uh, to the, you know, the deeds and restrictions? Yeah, it could be. Yep. Okay, um, because we don't need, this is only my opinion, we don't need more weeds and cattails and, and, uh, you know, these people deserve something that they could use. I think that was Kurt's kind of where he was going with it, and that's my sentiment too. We, they, they need something they can use over there and somebody would have to maintain it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jim. Um, uh, one more question, Brian. Actually, I like the idea of a natural open space. Uh, I, I'm not crazy about it being maintained. But uh, does 11 Mile end past South Hill when you go east? Is it? I am completely blanking. Let me pull up the aerial here. <laughs> Doesn't go down as far to South Hill, I don't believe. I think yeah, it goes past South Hill, but yeah, it is goes that, past I, South Hill into the campground. Yeah. Into the campground, okay. it ends at the right. it ends at the sod farm. Okay, and then turns north into Haas. That's right, the yeah. Cash Sod Farm. Right. Exactly. Okay. Any other questions for Brian? Yes, I, I have uh, something to say, Mike. This Please, is Carl. Carl. Yes, sir. So, um, I don't want to uh i'm not putting judgment on it because i actually like the average lot side but i think it's very important that uh that this be put on the table that this project went to the zba over three years ago it went to the zba on april 17th of 2017. that's when they had estate lot sizes and they came before the zoning board of appeals for the variance, as stated by Brian in, the, in his letter, and the Zoning Board of Appeals, on the assumption that there would be very large estate, 3.5 acres and up, um, that they gave the variance on that uh, length of road. Now, with that said, um, just for your information, um, how what length of time? Um, maybe Lisa could, or Brian, one, uh, what length of time do they have on this, uh, uh, on this variance? Uh, I just want to make sure that our housekeeping is in order and we're not making any mistakes. So that sure. Brian, I guess I'd fly it back to you and maybe Lisa could answer that. Good question. Uh, well, I haven't seen the actual ZBA meeting minutes, so I'm just, uh, going up based on what you just said. I think typically it's a year, but I'm not sure when the road was put into place. 
so if the road was constructed within that time, then, you know, again, without seeing the actual variance, um, it would seem that they've complied with what they needed to do. Brian, did you well, have anything to add? Yeah, I was going, well, I was going to add that the, the variance was to the road length and the road right. had begun construction uh, within that time frame um, allotted. So I don't see any violation here. Uh, in terms of granting the variance for road length. Well, again, and just to make sure that the house came in an order that was voted on for a state size lots. It was supposed to be 10 on the applicant's property and four on the, uh, I believe, on the uh, um, west side. So as long sure. as that house came in as an order, and just for the record, I wanted to state that, I'm ready to move forward if, if everybody's in agreement. But you're right, Carl, the sign is still up there that says estates up to 5.9 acres. So that, that is correct. All right, anything else, Carl? No, thank you. Oh, okay, all right, uh, very good. Uh, Rick? Rick thank Miner. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, good evening, everyone. Just a couple of things to touch on this evening. As Brian mentioned that the roads uh, were previously installed and there, and there was some limited amount of storm sewer that was installed. It, as Brian had explained, the, the main drainage is the road, road ditches, but there is some enclosed sewer, including rear yard storm sewer, to collect sump leads and such. And this plan actually shows an extension of existing storm sewers to pick up those extra lots. So I wanted to touch on that. And also, as you are aware, public, public sanitary is being provided to all lots now. We had a question on the existing barn on lot 17. We didn't know if it was the intent to keep the barn. Uh, when it was going to be taken down, if it was going to be taken down, that was just a question we raised. We think it's important to get approval for the Road Commission for Oakland County based on the new lot layout. And we wanted to state that the location of the pump station was discussed with the sewer committee and was approved with them. And that concludes my report. All right, thanks, Rick. Any questions for Rick? Uh, I have one, Mr. Chairman. Please. Rick, there was well, the uh, pump station on the lot. Was, was that an issue with anybody on that committee? Uh, apparently not. Hmm. Okay. All right, very good. Thanks, Rick. Lisa, did you have anything to add? I did, I had just a few things. Uh, the township will need a copy of the deed for the property. I know there's a photograph copy in the packet, but the township will need an actual physical copy of the deed. It also appears to me from uh, doing just a little bit of research on that is that there is an additional deed for some of those parcels sold in 2019 to a Paul Elko. So we just need confirmation from the applicant on who owns the property and get, get some physical copies of the deed uh, submitted to the township. Uh, as far as the site condominium is concerned, if that's what the applicant is proposing, uh, any kind of uh, motion to move this forward should be condi conditioned upon township review and approval of the condominium documents. And Mr. Chuck, going back to your question, that's where some of that language can be added um, as far as, you know, whether the, the area around that detention pond is maintained or kept mm -hmm. natural. Thank you. And then for easements, I know there's a proposed easement uh, along that pathway near uh, unit seven. So, We'll need to see the easement documents. And then there's also a couple access drives. Uh, if the township needs to use those, we'll also need easements for those as well. And that's all I have. 
Okay, thank, thank you, Lisa. <clears throat> All right, do we have an applicant tonight? It should and be Bob Freund. Yeah, if, if the board would uh, like to advise me of who <laughs> should be uh, participating, I'll bring up their video. So Bob Freund, I'll ask yes. uh, Mr. Freund to start his video. Okay. Hello, Mr. Freund, is there anybody else uh, that we should uh, also bring in this meeting? Uh, no, I, I, I am in uh, Pat Keith's office, but I, I'm handling it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, you're on, Bob. Okay. Um, uh, well, um, okay. Well, I'd, I guess I'd like to just say that that I am Bob Freund, that I do live at 27933 Tremont in Mill River. I've been a resident in Lyon Township for more than 20 years. I've worked at Tanglewood for, uh, since the late eight, uh, 1980s. Um, so I've been around. I did not want to build uh, another subdivision like all the rest of them that the big builder groups build. I, I absolutely wanted the largest lots I could possibly get. I love the uh, fact that we were going to do splits. Um, I did go to ZBA and, it, and the ZBA action was about the uh, length of the road and it was um, uh, agreed on because the uh, on the township uh, uh, map it shows a road going to the west of my road down to Milford Road and, and there's two other property owners that own that property. And so it, it allowed access to those um, owners to eventually develop their land. Uh, that was the big issue, I, I believe. But anyway, moving on, um, we, were, we were, I was happy with 10 splits in my property. Paul had uh, his four or five um, everybody's happy, but that didn't work out. So we ended up with a total of 10 splits. I was still happy with that. Uh, in fact, we had um, um, a house sold by uh, Blue Water Builders, Blue Peninsula Builders on lot seven for $850,000 and had a deposit when the county, uh, even though this property is a gravel pit, didn't think that we should put drain fields in. So when that happened, they, they kind of wrecked my whole sub. Um, and, and in order to pay for the lift station and the sewer taps and the sanitary sewer lines, the number of lots have increased uh, in, but it's a push. Um, the, the money from those lots will just pay for that infrastructure and that's it. Um, through time, uh, um, Detroit Edison and Bob Harris and others have always used this property to access the, the beds, the Lyon Township uh, seepage beds. Um, and that was always okay with me. And that's why we have that access road back there. Um, uh, let's see, what other issues shall we, shall we go through? Well, I guess we'll go through the plan and, and then you can keep asking me questions uh, um, uh, that you might have about all of this. So moving along, you, you already know where this uh, property is on the south side of uh, 11 Mile and all that sort of thing. Um, and you know the acreage and so forth. So Maybe we could go to the next picture. Uh, this was the original, this is where we had the uh, 10 lots and you can see that, well, you can't actually tell where the one, the sold property was, but unfortunately that didn't work out. And so it just morphed from that into the plan that you're, you, uh, we now have, but, uh, uh, pardon me. Uh, the existing structures, uh, uh, um, you can see that on there. The, the barn, Paul is hoping that somebody might fall in love with that barn and then he would rehab it and, 
and maybe keep it, but it is designated to be removed. Uh, the house there is a rental house of his and, and uh, he was all about putting that lift station on that lot. That lift station, by the way, is 150 feet from uh, the existing house, so it's quite a ways from it. Um, uh, I don't know what else I would tell you. Um, uh, the, the county has uh, inspected the road and, and um, uh, other than my doing the, the legal work, uh, they've accepted the road, but we stopped processing until all of this was cleared up because we've had so much trouble with this site. Mr. Uh, Freud, if, if I could interrupt for just a moment, it appears that your slides may not be matching the descriptions you're giving right now. I just want to make sure you're sharing the correct content. Okay. Well, at this point, I, I, you should be looking at the Hickory Creek site condominium uh, plan, which shows the 21 lots with an average of 34,000 uh, square feet. Um, I am still hoping to maintain a rural character out there. I'm trying, I'm trying to um, um, have in this sub things that people can't get in other subs. I want to differentiate this sub from the rest of the subs that are built around in the township. So I'm in favor of outbuildings that that have architectural standards that reflect the house that would be built on there. Uh, it does have open ditches. Um, it's a public roadway, public sewer. There will be private wells uh, because there's no public water near there. Um, uh, I, think, I think that covers that. Um, or do we have another slide? Yeah, I don't think it's showing. Yeah, I don't believe we're showing the correct slide set at the moment. Oh, okay. Right, Sorry me, about let me, that. Uh, let me get to that. Okay, we're we're gonna try and fix that. Okay. Okay. Is that does this? There we go. I, yeah, the slides are advancing now. Okay. Okay. I um, are we okay? Should I go back through them? No, we're fine, Bob. Oh, no, this is, this, is, this is good. You, you already just, you described it. Okay. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I just, the only other thing I might add is uh, uh, where that, where the cul-de-sac is, uh, there is an access road to maintain that uh, um, stormwater retention pond uh, that's near lot six. So there's an access road in there. Um, that pond, uh, lots of people fish there. Uh, it's just all gravel around that pond. Um, it, it would make sense to mow that, but it's very easy to walk because it is a gravel pit. It, that was where they mined the gravel. And so the surface is, uh, it's never muddy. Uh, it's, it's, it's very walkable all the time. And I don't know, putting chips on there, I, I, don't, I don't know that that would be so great because it's uh, really readily accessible to uh, the homeowners there just as it is in that it's all gravel. Um, but, and, and that's okay with me. And I don't mind putting uh, uh, information in the condo docs to support um, their using that. I have no issues with that. Um, uh, in terms of the um, a sidewalk down at 11 mile, um, if the appropriate thing is to make a contribution for that, I don't, I don't have any objections to that either. Uh, I would just like to see this uh, project, which has been plagued by difficulties, finally moving forward. Uh, it's been a long journey um, and it's getting complex. But anyway, I, I'm on board to get this thing done. Any questions? Thanks, Bob. Any questions Bob, by the commissioners? Patty. I, I have a question. It's Patricia. Bob, the person mm -hmm. that's on lot, um, the, the one, the house that's remaining, lot 18, I believe. Yes. Are they aware that that, that pump's going to be on the front of the property? That, that's uh, Paul's house. It's his rental house. Oh, okay. But it, okay. And, and Paul was, actually it was Paul's idea to put it there. Um, 
we originally talked about putting it down near lot 21. And All right, let me look we were, at that. And when we had those discussions, uh, uh, early the, late winter, early spring, the water table was so high uh, and right across the uh, 11 mile on the north side, there's a, a creek and, and that creek was just really full and to dewater that, to put that lift station there uh, would have been very difficult. So everybody agreed that uh, lot 18 on Paul's rental house property was a, a much easier and more practical place to put it. Okay, I have a question for you. Sure. Do your, your deeds and restrictions allow a rental house? Because uh -huh. I know in my subdivision, we don't allow that. You know, that's a good question. I, I'm just saying, just... because people don't, you know, sometimes rental homes, they don't take care of them. And now you're, yeah. you're building, you know, 21 lots that are, you know, large, just like you said, kind of a more on a little rural side. And now you're putting a rental, the rental house is there with that pump station. It just, I'm just saying it kind of doesn't fit to me. And that's what I don't like. I mean, I agree with Kurt and um, Jim Chuck about leaving and Brian actually to leave you know, that pond and natural, like, I, I don't think it needs a, a path either. We've had a few subdivisions that have the pass, the wood chip pass. They don't maintain them. People overtake them, you know, so I'm not a big fan of that. So I kind of like that it's going to be natural as long as you guys take care of it. But now I'm thinking, you know, a rental house in the middle of the, it just, I don't know. I want to, yeah. well, I, I guess you need to answer that question for me because a lot of subdivisions, they don't want rental houses because people don't take care of them. You know, so I'm just you, being honest, you know. I, I understand what you're saying. And actually, I think I agree with you. Uh, that's Paul's house. Um, I know. Uh, I, I don't know what Paul's going to do for sure. Um, you know, he may remodel the whole thing and put a new exterior on it that, that right. fits the, the new houses. And then, well, yeah, you wouldn't like that. You wouldn't want to buy in that. So, why, okay, so can you, can't you move? Why can't that pump be moved to somewhere in the open space where it's really not part of a lot? That That's my question. I mean, I just well, right in the middle of, I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. Yes, I know. But it, and, but it is 150 feet away from that house. I understand, uh, but still. Uh, I know. I, and, and I hear you. And, I don't, and being... you know, you might not want that to be a, a rent. You know, again, those people are, might not like that, that it's going to be a constantly a rental house. It's, it's very odd. Bob, I have a question. How on the building envelope for 19 and 17, it looks like that pump station would be closer than the existing house on 18. Oh, let me look at that. It, yeah, I it just, it's just, can't, Bob, you got to move that. That just, that's not a good spot for it. I mean, I have to agree with Brian. Can't I? I don't. So explain to me why it has to be there. Why does it have to be on a lot? Why can't it be in the common spaces somewhere? I, I think that. Uh, well, your questions are really good, and and I don't know if I can answer them all perfectly, except that that generally the the township uh, um, uh, Anthony. Uh, needs to have access to the uh, uh, to the uh, pump station so he can maintain it. Uh, we did consider down at 11 Mile Road, but other than there, it, I mean, we wouldn't want to put it by this uh, the the gravel pit um, pond. I don't think we want to go in there. Uh, and and the and the water table was is is the issue that really forced it to where it's at. And and it, it was a question well, of it floods over to there. Water. You know, that's why we can't have the township park. You know, I don't know. I do, I'm not that I'm not a fan of it there, but I do want to see the sidewalk, by the way. Someday we're gonna have the park there. We're gonna fix the drainage and we're gonna have the park. Yeah, yes, and I hope so. I hope so too. Those are my comments. Okay, thank you, Patricia. 
Uh, Mr. Chuck, questions you want to, does everyone want to wait for the public hearing first or? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I, yeah let's do that. Okay. You, All right. Chairman. Okay. All right. Okay, Bob, anything else? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Don't go anywhere. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, Ken, um, we're going to open up the public hearing now. Do we have anyone waiting? Uh, let's take a look. So we do have callers on the line. Uh, callers, just as a reminder, if you would like to speak at this point, please press star nine on your keypad, and that will alert us to unmute your line. Uh, again, that number or that uh, series of keys is star nine, and that will alert us that you would like to speak. And give us your name and address. Uh, that's correct. Uh, I apologize, Mr. Capletti. If you'd like to speak, uh, also, we need to have your name and address for the record. I am not seeing any hands raised at this point, Mr. Capletti. Okay. All right. Uh, three, two, one. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Chuck. Yeah, okay. Um, you know... I, I, Bob, I like the project. I see your reasoning now behind kind of a, a, a rural look differentiating from a lot of our subdivisions, which are very, very nice. This is just something different. And, and I can appreciate your thought on that. The pump house, um, you know, not only well, 150 feet from the house, but if I'm, if I'm looking at that correctly, it's, it's practically right up on the road uh, when you're coming in. So now, you know, if I live in 17, 16, 15, 14, 10, I'm driving by it every day, much less it's on the property of 18. Why couldn't it, I guess is my question, why couldn't it go behind seven? Why couldn't it go over by the retention pond? Is there something that's prohibiting that from even being considered? I guess this is my question. I'm not sure, Mr. Chuck, uh, about how to answer that specifically, except that, that they're always put a, as near to the road as possible uh, for service purposes. Uh, if they have to get, uh, oftentimes they have to get trucks to back up to that. I've seen them uh, bring uh, wreckers in and use their uh, the cranes to lift the pumps out. Uh, oh, they also God. have to get uh, vacuum trucks uh, to the lift station to vacuum out the debris at the bottom. Um, I have I have these stations at uh, Tanglewood, and they are they're all along the road, right next to the road. Uh, one's on Country Club Drive, where all the golfers and everybody goes by. But there's so much landscaping around it, nobody ever really notices it, um, okay. and they're much much. They, I mean, they are really close to the houses at Tanglewood and it, uh, it hasn't been a problem. Um, uh, if we went down to lot 21, I don't know that we'll, we would be 150 feet away from that house. Um, it, 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 was a, it was a struggle for us to figure out where to put it. A lot of thought was given to it. And with the committee and Paul Elko and myself uh, and the engineers, it just uh, it just came to that decision. Okay, uh, I, I can accept that. And I I know you've uh, built a lot of uh, developed a lot of nice things in this township. So I'll take your word. One last question: um, What size homes and approximately the dollar value are you thinking of, Bob? Boy, you, you know that's been a myth, um, a moving target. Also, uh, 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 um, Paul wants to be the builder there, and he believes that there'll be um, ten or more ranch houses in there, and and he sees them being um, uh, four fifty to five fifty, um, and um, I got to tell you that Lombardo also would like to buy these. Uh, Lombardo would build a more traditional property that you see in a lot of subs in, in Lyon Township. Um, I think it, it would be more handsome if Paul put his ranches and in, in, uh, architecturally diverse product in there rather than building um, multiple times the same house. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Uh, the the big house builder that I had at one time that was going to take all the lots is gone. So I don't see uh, any uh, seven or eight hundred thousand dollar houses going in there anymore. That's kind of been ruined by all of these missteps that have taken place. Okay, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. May I speak again? Thank you. Sure, please. Mike. Okay. Again, Patricia. All right, Bob, is the entire road in or just part part of it? I'm sorry, I I, I don't think I couldn't hear the, you. The road. How how much of the road is already installed? Oh, all of it. All of it with the cul-de-sac? Yeah, sure. It's all it's okay. all built. See, we had to build the whole yeah. sub okay. in order to get our split. Okay. And then when we went in to get our splits, uh, 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 the county did some extra research and found uh, some, I, I don't remember exactly what the rules were, but, but we couldn't have 14 splits. We ended up with 10. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to get, okay, that's good. Uh, I have another comment though, regarding that truck or trucks that are going to come into that subdivision. I will bet my bottom dollar that we're going to get complaints about that because we get complaints about those trucks in other subdivisions. So I know Bob, you might say in Tanglewood that they don't complain, but that's not really true. <laughs> and um, we have also the pumping and hauling from the woodwind, our sewer, and we've had to replace an apron to help them. So you think you don't, but you will. So I still wish you could look at for a different location for that. It's gonna be right in the middle of the subdivision. I, I'm, I'm willing. I'm willing to meet with Anthony and um, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to mention that to Anthony myself because I understand that you want it to be accessible, accessible, but I just think it's a poor spot for it. Uh, let's have the meeting with with Anthony. Yes. I'd, I'd be happy to ha attend it with you. Why doesn't and... Paul just sell the lot with the subdivision? Is there some great house there? I mean, I didn't. No, I don't know. I, I can't. I don't you know. get that. Why doesn't he just tear it down and sell it as a lot? And then you guys, yeah. that you wouldn't have that problem with. Yeah. So the, the, the big house develop, uh, builder that wanted to build there wanted him to tear it all down, but uh, he, Paul was difficult. Patty, if I may, on the topic of the pump station, um, and maybe um, Bob Emerin, uh, I think I saw him on. Um, could describe things a bit more. But when we met as a small group, there was really only two potential spots for the pump house based on depth of the pump, uh, as well as the water table. And the one was here on 18, and the one was up by the road just north of 21, near 11 mile. And as Bob Troin mentioned, it the water table makes things really, really difficult up by the road. So there are some real engineering reasons that it's put here, um, but perhaps the, the end solution is making sure that there are steps to mitigate any smells if this is the final location. Um, I don't know, Bob Emerin, are you on? Could you comment on the engineering rationale behind the location? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, we did meet. We did meet with uh, Leslie and Anthony on this, and we we did look at you know where we could possibly put this. And one thought, you know, a lot of times the pump stations are placed out by the uh, right of way, you know, near the entrance to the subdivision. Um, let me start my video. Sorry. Uh, near the entrance to the subdivision up front. Um, the problem is is. Uh, as you run your sanitary sewer from like lots uh, 12 and 13 up to the front of the subdivision, uh, the drop of the pipe gets that pump station deep enough to where it's, it's definitely impacting the water table. And the idea of putting it in the middle is, is it shortened the length of the gravity sanitary sewer so that the pump station was shallower and didn't impact the, uh, the water table as much. So we wouldn't have to dewater as much to get, uh, the pump station in there. Um, out at 11 Mile Road, uh, there is a, an existing force main. Um, so this, uh, the pump station will pump over there and connect to the, over to the existing force main. 
and just looking at all. And again, we sat down with Leslie and Anthony to try to figure out, you know, what's the best location to put this in. And I know setting it in front of a lot like that isn't ideal, um, but um, it, it certainly made a lot more sense to put it there than to have gravity sewer all the way to the front at 11 mile road. Uh, so that was the rationale. Um, and I know that, uh, and I guess, I, I don't know if Leslie or, I guess Leslie is not on tonight, is she? I think, uh, who's on tonight from CES? I'm not sure. Rick, Rick, Rick Miner. Uh, Rick, are you, did you have any conversations with Leslie on this? I don't know if you did or not. No, I did not. Okay. Um, but yeah, we did meet with Leslie and Anthony. And uh, this was the, again, they, they said the same things. You know, do we really want it here? But uh, uh, they were both very agreeable to it uh, when we met. And uh, this seemed like the, a good logical location for it. Bob, what type of maintenance is needed and how often is uh, maintenance needed on, on a pump house? Um, I, maybe a Rick could answer that better. Um, I'm good at designing them, but the, the maintenance, okay. I, I'm not as much. Um, I know there is some regular maintenance. They do need to come out and clean it and inspect it on intervals. Um, is that um, quarterly or yearly or who knows? Yeah, uh, Rick. Yeah, Rick, yeah. I, I don't know that I can answer that either. I, I almost wish that Anthony were online right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I okay. can tell you that at Tanglewood, it, you know, we don't, um, it's every couple of years that you have to vacuum out the bottom. It's, it's not quarterly or, or sure. even annually. Okay. So, okay. So it's not that big of but an it, issue. But it happens. And so you have to have access to it. it it's a, it's a, a rarity, but, but it happens. So you have to be able to access it. Sure. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. Jim, can I have one final comment here? Please. Well, you know, based on what I've heard and listened to, aesthetically, you know, you can't always end up with aesthetic features. It sounds like uh, our planners, our engineers felt this is where it needs to go. And, you know, I guess uh, people still have an option. Uh, lot 19 and lot 17. Buyer beware, you know what you're walking into. So... And I do believe it'll be landscaped properly to where it'll be uh, as aesthetically pleasing as possible. But if that's where it's got to go, I certainly wouldn't hold the project up a pump station. So that's my final comment on this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think Mr. Hoffman's not here, but I'm sure he'd be excited to hear that uh, the homes are going to look different than many of the other subdivisions in Lyon Township. Um, I don't have a problem with, with the pump station there, as long as it's landscaped properly. Um, like to see uh, money put into the sidewalk fund. I don't know, putting in a walkway there, uh, how beneficial it would be, but um, that's really all I have. Uh, who's next, Ron? Mr. Pennington. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, my original comments were very similar about the pump station, just why not move it closer to 11 mile, but I think that's been answered. Um, I also would, at some point, I think we just need to start putting sidewalks in at the, out in the roads for people and not necessarily contributing to the fund because eventually we're gonna have to put all these sidewalks in someday. Uh, so I'd like to see the sidewalk go in um, and the pond um, or the open space, if it is in fact a nice walkable area and now I don't see any reason to, uh, I, I certainly don't like the wood chip path. So I would just leave it like it is also. That's, that's really all I have right now. Okay, good. Thanks Ryan. Kurt. I'm all right with the pump station. Um, it's good discussion. It's already, they, they already tried to figure it out. There's really no other option. The, uh, the rental unit though on 18, that just seems like uh, not a good, I don't know. I agree with Patty. I, don't, I wouldn't kill it, but I'm not comfortable with it either. Um, but everything else is fine. Okay, thank you. Carl Town. Yeah, um, I agree with Patty 100%. Um, on the uh, deed restriction on the rental. It was number one on my list. Um, I've been to that site and uh, 
uh, I'll just call it like it is. It's it's not uh, up to snuff, and I don't know if it even passed inspection. Um, the rental's got to go. Uh, there's no place in this in a special land use. Um, it's got to go, or it doesn't have my vote for the special land use. Um, sidewalk's got to go in. I agree 100% with Patty and Ron. Uh, the lift pump. Um, I'd like to get more clarification on it. Um, we, I don't see the engineering drawings on it. It's hard for me to even say uh, Rick doesn't have a opinion on it because he doesn't have the the paperwork in front of him, and I respect that. And he didn't talk to uh, anybody on that subject. So I think this. I mean, I'd like to get it moving forward, but uh, even if it was the lift pump alone and the uh, uh, rental, um, it needs to come back. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, the vegetative strip um, I'm gr good with. Um, something has to be addressed with the easement on three and four. And, uh, I don't, I don't see, I'd see a natural area around that pond. It is an ex gravel pit. Um, again, it's, uh, if this planning commission says that's enough open space then I'm good with that, I, don't, I really don't have an issue with that to get the lot size down from 35,000 square foot down to some of them that are, you know, there's 11, I think of them, 13 of the lots that are under 35,000 square feet, but I'm, I'm good with that if everybody else is. Um, we had clarification on the barn that comes down. Um, again, we just don't have a smell from the lift pump, we have noise. So um, I'd like to see that taken a look at and I digress from there. Um, I like the average lot size. Uh, it's been a long road, as the applicant says, but uh, there's still some issues that have to be addressed. I digress. Thanks, Carl. Um, where are you now? You're not in Mackinac. Uh, San actually, Francisco. I can't tell you. Oh, OK. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not in prison, right. though. <laughs> okay, <not for> <laughs> yeah. uh, Mike, can I um, speak yes, to please, still? Patricia, please. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Um, I have to agree with Carl. I, 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 you know what I don't like is that we don't have clarification on the, if the pump station has to go there. And we don't have a consultant that can say, this is the spot. And, and that's what bothers me. It's maybe it is. But we don't have that. We don't have Anthony. We don't have Leslie. Rick doesn't know the answer. And no offense, Bob Freund. I get it, but you are you don't work for us. And I would like to see it moved. Maybe it can't be, but you guys don't realize that we live with this problem with the residents around it. And that's why I'm a little more picky because we hear the complaints all the time. You know, that's traffic on their road, that's heavy trucks. You know, again, we've we've put money into the pot to repair roads because of our sewer treatment plan. So I'm not sure if I live there. You know, people, I know it's buyer beware, but I think it's our job to be to get it to the best spot it can be. And since there's no Leslie to tell us or Rick or Anthony or anybody from our side, that's what I have a problem with. If, if Leslie said, yep, this is it, can't go anywhere else, then I could live with that. But I, it, we don't have that on our side. And, and I'm a little concerned because we, again, we have to live with it. And I don't like the rental. I, I, if you wanna build a beautiful 21 lot subdivision like this, I don't get the rental. I, 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 I would ask Lisa to make sure what, what, the, what the restrictions are because you can't have that in my sub. I bet you can't have that in, Kurt sub or anywhere else because they don't they don't want rentals there why would you want a rental here I don't that's another thing I don't understand it so I kind of would like that address too because you're going to have these beautiful I'm assuming these beautiful homes and then this rental house it it, it they it just it's like we're approving something that doesn't go together and and that's my concern so not that I want to extend it to another month but 
I'm not happy with the answers. And I know I'm just one person, but logically it just, that's logic to me. And I, mm -hmm. I just, I don't think the subdivision would be happy with that. I wouldn't be. Lisa, so, can, can a home association prohibit rentals? Are they, uh, is that lawful? Uh, well, I'd have to take a look and see first if there is a home association established there and then what their restrictions would be. But um, off the top of my head, I, I don't know of any restrictions that there would be unless it's written into the deed. And I haven't seen the deed for that particular parcel. So those are things that I'd want to take a look at to give you a, a more defined answer. Mr. But Chairman, wouldn't the, yeah, sorry. yes. No, no, go ahead and finish, and then I'd like to. Well, speak. I was just curious. That wouldn't wouldn't the uh, the city or township supersede that? Then, then a home association. No, mine's in my home association. Yeah, so is mine. So I go along. I understand where Patty's coming from there. Um, so is Kirkway Estates. It's an HOA bylaws. Hmm. So, so, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I have a question for Brian. Yes. If if we were to table this, could this come back in two weeks? Well, so that's the a bit of a timing conundrum, right? So the special land use, um, the board of trustees won't consider it if you pass it on to them in two weeks. But you could take action on the site plan in two weeks. Um, your other option is if we are all in agreement that the development size is good, the use of the average lot size mechanism makes sense. You could um, you could move on the special land use and then make a decision on the site plan in two weeks. But if you if you don't make a decision on the special land use tonight, um, realistically the first opportunity for the board to approve it would then be their first or their September meeting. So that's the timing thing, um, but you could certainly push it back two weeks. So if we if we went ahead and got the special land use, then potentially it could go to the trustees in August. Correct. Okay. Um, well, I don't know. There oh. may be other comments. No, but the township board has to approve the special land use before final approval of the site plan, correct? Uh, your approval of the site plan would be contingent upon approval of the special land use by the board. By the, by the board, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, any more questions for Bob before we make a motion here? And, and Mr. Chairman, if I could say, um, I would like to move this sub forward and, and I don't, I'm here to cooperate with the township. And if, if it makes a difference, I have, uh, I don't see, if you put it in your um, uh, demands that, that the deed restrictions prevent rentals, I certainly have no objection to that. Is your partner, um, or does that matter? I know that's, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm putting well, you on the spot. Well, that's a good question. Paul, what, what would Paul, I mean. Can he his... be bought out or something? I mean, it, because we're not writing the deed restrictions. I guess I, I would think you are, Bob. Uh, that's that's correct. And they haven't been written yet. So so uh, we've contacted an attorney to write those. And, and all I need to do is call them and put the, you know, tell them to uh, handle that situation. I'm willing to do that. Because I, I do agree with my colleagues. It's, it's very strange and awkward that that one lot in the middle for somewhat of a, a, of a unique subdivision with uh, some different differentiation in terms of elevations and homes, and then we would have that. So, I, I mean, I would be comfortable with that. I, I, I wanna try to move this, you know, the best of our ability and keep everything uh, where we need to have it. So that's one obstacle I think is out of the way if, if, if that's agreeable with my colleagues. 
So can I ask for clarification when you're talking about deed restrictions, are you talking about an actual deed restriction or are you talking about language that you would insert in the condominium documents, the master deed? A, a language in the master deed. Okay. I, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't always use exactly the precise words. That, that's fine. I just want to make sure I understood what, what was being discussed. I think part of that will depend on, on Paul Elkrow uh, and his reaction to that. So perhaps it can be a condition of special land use approval uh, and we can you know, gauge Mr. Elko's reaction to that. <clears throat> okay, well, who would like well, to make I a think motion? We, yeah, I think we need some answers. What's the consensus to table or do we want to um, move this forward? Table. That's Carl. Carl. Okay. And if we moved it forward for special land use only, would that still basically give us the opportunity to get some answers to the questions and then let the, the uh, developer be on the uh, August, uh, Trustee meeting. That, that would be my question. Can we can we can we get this done by just approving the site plan and then getting answers to the questions, excuse me, special land use, and then getting uh, answers to the question on the site plan? Is that feasible? I guess whomever. Uh, well, I would think your authority to to deal with this would be under the special land use approval standards. Uh, so I think if you were to move forward on the special land use approval, you would at least want to make that condition on you know, elimination of that rental unit. So when it gets to the board, they know what they're looking at or table it until you get the answers that you're looking for. Okay, all right. Who wants to step up? Mike, I'm, uh, this, is, this is a confusing one for me. Can I just ask a question? There's no, is there any way, to, I, I'm leaning towards tabling it, but I just wanna ask the question regarding the pump, the sewer, the, what's the terminology? The lift pump, lift station. Can, is there any way we could put that conditional to, finding out what less, if, if there's another option, if there's another option and it's just more money or, um, but if we have the answers to that question, that would make, me, to Carl's point, we have to have information to make good decisions here. This seems to, and I'm not comfortable without Leslie telling us that there is another option and if it's going to be $50,000 or $5,000 and that's why they're putting it on lot 18 I would want to know that All right yeah and that's what we don't know for sure and so that's is there any way we can make a motion tonight conditional on getting that information from Leslie not in my opinion okay thanks Carl Well, then, Carl, Mr. Chair, would you uh, why don't you entertain a motion? Yes, please. I'd make a I'd make a motion to table AP-20-16B dash dash Hickory Creek, Creek special land use. Lacking information on the lift pump, uh, deed restrictions on the rental, or if the rental, in my opinion, shouldn't even be there. Um, I think that's that's good enough. That'd be my motion. Or okay, Did, we have a motion support. Um, Lisa, we still need to see copy of the deed, correct? Uh, yeah, that's just a housekeeping issue. Uh, if the applicant okay. can submit copies of the deed, that would be that would be um, necessary. Yeah, the condo documents, and then you talked about the easement. Any easement agreements for that uh, access road down by right. Unit Seven, and then for the other two access roads. Right. Okay. So we have a motion to table by Mr. Town, and I'm sorry, who's who? 
second there. Kurt, Kurt. Is it Kurt? Right. Okay, um, Kelly, I need you to take roll on this. Sure, Patricia Carconi? Yes. Jim Chuck? Yes. Michael Complitti? Yes. Ram Pennington? Yes. Kurt Ranke? Yes. Carl Town? Yes. Okay. All right, special land use table uh, next. Uh, the Hickory uh, Creek site plan. Well, I think it's all tied in together, if you don't mind me saying so, Mike. Do, do we need to have a separate motion, though, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes. So I'd make a motion to table AP-20-16A Hickory Creek site plan. Second. Second. Hickory Creek site plan. With all the information that I had for the special land use. For support. Okay. Who supported? I missed that. Kurt. 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 Again. All right. Um, a motion to table Hickory Creek site plan. Um, Kelly, I need roll, please. Sure. Ron Pennington? Yes. Kurt Ranke? Yes. Jim Chuck? Yes. Patricia Carconi? Yes. Carl Town? Yes. Michael Complitti. Yes. Okay. Bob, we'll be seeing you again. <clears throat> Thank you for your time. Thank you, and I will, I will get on it. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Uh, Brian, AP 20-04 <clears throat> Event Barn Zoning Ordinance Text Amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> if you recall, pre-pandemic, um, pre we had some visitors into the Planning Commission who presented us um, in concept uh, their vision for an event barn facility in, uh, in the township. And their vision was to have this in some of our, our more rural locations in the township to have more of a retreat feel for the event barns. Um, and the feedback at that planning commission meeting was uh, fairly positive. Uh, and so we're bringing back to you um, really what we're calling our first draft or our introduction to standards to allow um, these types of facilities uh, in our R10 district as a special land use. So not only would they be subject to site plan requirements, but they'd also be subject to a public hearing and their neighbors would have an opportunity to, to weigh in. Um, I've got a couple of items highlighted in our memo dated July 10th that I think are of particular importance. Um, the first being, as we have it written right now, it would be an accessory use. So. Uh, what that means is the owners would be required to have a residence on the property. Um, this one, I'm, I'm not, I don't have strong feelings one way or the other. Um, I've written ordinances in both directions, somewhere it's operated strictly as a, um, as a business and others where it is more of a home occupation where you, make use of facilities on your residential property. Uh, so that's one thing that I'd like some direction on a discussion on, uh, assuming we wanna move forward with this item. Um, <clears throat> second would be our parcel size. So we're suggesting a minimum of 10 acres of land. Um, and really our goal here is to provide as much separation from, um, from other properties as we can get. Um, while R10 is our largest zoning district, um, you know, it is typically or most commonly used for residential uses. And so we wanna be respectful in all instances of those single family residential uses. Um, 10 acres would be a suggestion for a minimum lot size. Um, five is an alternative that is used by a lot of municipalities for these uses. Um, but we feel like in terms of protection of our existing residents that 10 is probably more appropriate. 
Brian, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Have you seen anybody go larger, 15 or 20 or 40 for this kind of thing? None that I can recall off the top of my head. Okay, thank you. Quite honestly, the, the, while we want these lots to be fairly big, the, the most important thing to me is distance of setbacks and some of the screening and buffering. You know, if, if we're still able to get 100 feet or 200 feet of, of good quality buffering between the lots, it doesn't necessarily matter if it's a five acre piece or a 10 acre piece, you're still giving yourself a good buffer from, uh, from your adjacent properties. So. I was just thinking, if they're, if they're gonna have weddings and bands, music, every Saturday night in the summer months, that's that's going to be loud, and um, that's why I was just asking if if we've got property and we can make it. Because again, thinking of the the, the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I agree. So that kind of leads me to the next point: is whether or not you feel that a hundred feet of separation is adequate. Um, you know, even our industrial district buffers from residential properties are about 75 feet. Um, so when you think about it in that vein, uh, if we would want to separate our heavy industrial from a residential district by 75 feet, um, 100 feet for an event facility would probably be um, reasonable. Uh, but um, again, I'm looking for your feedback on all of these standards. We're suggesting a maximum number of events uh, you know, one large event of 50 people or greater per weekend is what we would consider. And then you could have a smaller event um, uh, during that time or during that weekend as well. Uh, you know, <clears throat> Brian, this is Jim. I, yeah. In my opinion, 100 feet's not far. It's That's 30 yards, 33 to be exact. And, and if I... I Forget what's the total acreage on this site? I, I I read it somewhere. I thought. Well, we don't. The concept they had some ideas, but I don't think that they have panned out. So that's still. I think rather than looking site specific, we should be looking. Yeah, and, and I guess where I'm leading with it, I think I think there's enough room on this, whether they, occupy residency or not, to where we could create. Uh, you know, a couple hundred feet, quite frankly. Uh, uh, there, there, I don't think there's a whole lot around that area, uh, but um, I, I would think it needs to be more than 100 feet. I guess that's my point. You're looking for feedback. I, I would like to see 200 because noise does travel. And if somebody's renting it, you know, the expectation is have a good time. I, I know the next page has some uh, time restrictions and so forth as to when things uh, have to stop. But um, I think that the, the more distance we can create, the better off everyone will be. Thank you. I agree. This is Carl. Um, I think 150 feet going up with a berm or a wall, um, I'd, I'd prefer a berm. Um, I think it really buffers the noise down. Uh, and then landscaped. But again, we'd have to make sure that we have the right slope for that berm, berm so it's, it's high enough and it's specific uh, to the size of the berm, the slope. Um, uh, I, I, I actually, it's funny that, uh, don't laugh at me, everybody, but I threw on uh, Chip and Joanna last night and uh, they, <laughs> um, she was, uh, they, they had a bed, bed and breakfast and they had a house on the property and they remodeled the house on the property for the caretakers of the bed and breakfast. And in their case, it works. Um, I, I wouldn't want to necessarily say that um, if it would pigeonhole us into an accessory use. Um, I'd like to have some feedback on that. And certainly with the public hearing, I'd like to hear on that as well. But but I think a berm would work and, and to get it right. 
I think it'll block a lot of the noise. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Carl. Carl, uh, can, I, can I, Mr. Chairman, can I ask Carl a sure. question? Carl, you saying 10 acres is, is enough for the berm? Oh, you mean to, uh, on 10 acres, to berm the property? Wherever there's need for, uh, if there's uh, houses, homes around this area, yeah. even if there's one, um, it should be bermed um, to keep the noise down. I, again, I'm open to five acres, 10 acres. I haven't come up with a number yet, but uh, okay. I, I, th I think collectively we can uh, come up with a number, but I think berming works real well. Uh, so whatever it's, if it's 150 feet or 200 feet, it's just my opinion. Because I'm not seeing that we would have a dozen of these in the, in the township. If there would be one or two, a couple of them, and I would just wouldn't want to see them on top of a subdivision. If it's going to be done, like everything we try to do, do it with excellence and make it work. So most of our people are happy. And um, anyway. Yeah, I can't imagine anyone else even doing it, Kirk. But I do like right. the idea. I can see this for even even civic events for our own township. Uh, you know, maybe we want to have a, a, a chili cook-off in the fall and we rent this and, and something for, for Christmas. Uh, here comes Santa and, you know, so I can see a benefit, but I don't think uh, there'd be more than, uh, you know, one of these probably, even that's rolling the dice in my opinion. But they're, they're obviously serious about it, so. Yeah. And to, to Brian, if I can go back, if we if we had the size right and the neighbors were going to be pleased with it, I would not see a problem with two major two events a weekend, Friday and a Saturday night. Why would we? What's the thinking of only one big event? Because people would be upset. Is that kind of the thought process? Yeah, um, I think we're looking at overall <laughs> impact. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking if we have, if it's 20 acres or if it's the right location and the neighbors are not, we're not, we don't have 200 people at the meeting. If we, if we design it and pick the right, you know, the berms and the, and the evergreens and everything for noise, then uh, make it so that it'll be done right. And for the most part, people will be happy and, and, and they, they can make money. They can do it two, two or even three. Night, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if they wanted. Mike, can I? Yes, please. Mr. Chairman, um, yes. I'm going to rain on this big parade, but this is, again, just my opinion. I'm not supporting this at all. Uh, I've talked to our, uh, our, one of our attorneys that is representing a ton of communities that already have these barns in their community, and they have become nothing but a nuisance. So you have to put yourself, if you say you, you bought a 10 acre parcel and you build your dream home and you have horses, and you, so every day, could be every day, could be just on the weekends, but at, think about how many people come to a wedding. You're talking about 150 to 200 people every single weekend going by your house. Every single weekend, you know that if you have a large piece of property, you have to have mature trees to, to douse the noise. There, She is telling me, and this is right from her, that the police are constantly called out there for uh, brawls and golf carts and people getting injured on golf carts. Um, you know, you really, you say it's till 11, but can you really control that? I just think we're a much more of a populated community and I don't think Lyon Township, this is just my opinion. This is not the place for these kind of barns. I think it's got to be on acreage, big acreage. And, you know, if you have it on a gravel road, you know, the wear and tear, who's going to, who, where is that fair to the people that are on the gravel road? You know, we're trying to pave roads to get away from gravel roads. And even if you pave them, I'm just saying, these are people visiting our community. I'm, not, I'm just after I thought it was going to be the greatest thing. I, I'm with you, Carl. I, I love the episode with them when they did the take, take uh, caretaker. Of, uh, I saw that too. But we have to think about it. This is people that are already living here. And now you're going to have an event that's going to be 
partly outside in a barn. And I think it's different than having it in a hall. Because if it was in a hall, would we put a hall in the middle of a 10 acre parcel? Probably not. Patty, I don't know. I, I just, Pat, no, I'm Patty, just, that's a great point. And you've talked to somebody with experience. That's why I was thinking well, 20 acres. Because, what, if, what if we said 40 acres? Well, you know what I mean? Well, this is what I'm telling you. See, I, I would love that. I mean, that would be if I could get married. I did get married in my backyard, which I loved it on a little teeny lot. But I think, oh, my gosh, I just love that idea. I was all for it. And she started telling me, she goes, oh, my God. So she's an insurance attorney for, for communities, cities, villages, and townships. She goes, oh, my God, you have no idea. We I represent these people day in and day out for these, these barns that, you know, and it could be graduation parties. It could be a bar mitzvah. It could be many things you could hold in these barns. But she said, you would not believe how much trouble they have caused. And I never thought about that. I mean, I never thought about it. But when I talked to her, I was like, oh. you know, I'm just thinking. And she goes, oh, my gosh, they're suing and the neighbors hate it. And every day these cars go by. Think about it. They're going in and they're going out every day. So I'm like thinking this is probably for me, for me, it's not for lying. I don't. We're, we're so growing so rapidly. I mean, we doubled in our, our um, population, you know, within how many years? And I just, I, you'd have to have a big piece of property. And even if you had a big piece of property, think about it. I wouldn't want to live by that. I don't want to do that to somebody Patty, else. Patty, let me, let me ask you something. Yes. You know, I, I think the name is Three Cedars. It's on yes. five or six miles south of town. Yes, seven mile in Angle Road. I was there. I was there for a, a father, grandfather, daughter yes. dance. Yes. And it was an amazing event up in the yes. loft of the barn. The, the, the whole ambiance, everything, parking yes. on the, the grass, you know, field right in front there. It, it was, and that's rural, that's out. If you had 40, 30 or 40 acre parcel and that made sure it was not near a sub, high right. probability, or we could write that in the, the, the wording right. maybe. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I just see, I've experienced that at that location. Oh, it was amazing. Years. That's and I don't, it'd be interesting to see if what kind of trouble the neighbors there have with that situation. Yeah, I don't know how close. That's I mean, a, if you're talking, a piece of property. if you're talking wherever this is, if it's closer to a, to the city, more a city, you know what I mean? That I can see that. I'm just saying, think about it, because if you would want to live by that, I wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't. I, I, after I talked to her who's representing communities that now wish they didn't have it and they're trying to fight it because all the neighbors are in an uproar. You know, yeah. you think you think what it is is awesome. You know, the lights, the music. I mean, you don't think about all the other things that come with it. I just wouldn't even have thought of that. And, yes, but you know, do, do people do people complain about Irwin's, about the busloads of people? Do you get complaints? Well, you're not from... mixing alcohol there. And you're not well, you're not always dancing. mixing alcohol. It's not at, and it's still, not at you, 11 o'clock at night either. But you're talking, you're talking, talking about, about a lot of these family. people, right? But you're talking about people coming in from out of town and cars oh, yeah, going and coming in. And Irwin's, but, I mean, but you're on two paved a, roads too. So if it was and, a paved road, well, I'm just saying, I'm more, just giving you once I talked to her, I, I changed my whole idea. And where's this thinking, other place oh, at, Patty? Where's this other place at that you're talking about? The, the, no, I'm talking of, I talked to an attorney that represents communities that have these oh, barns. Uh, different communities. I thought it was a community. Different communities. Okay. No, that she's representing yeah. okay. them. Okay. Well, because in now Michigan, they become Patty, more is it of in a Michigan? Nuisance. Pardon is me? It, is it in Michigan? Or oh, all? absolutely. Oh, yeah. She's, in our, she's our insurance attorney. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I think, Brian, you're looking for feedback. We've heard. I mean, those are good arg not good arguments or good issues that everyone's bringing up. But well, I would like maybe her, the answer well, I would is like Brian to talk to Nancy. You know, it's Nancy Dubinsky. That's she. She's the one that told me about. But maybe the, the answer is someplace, and it might be thirty acres if they want to invest in it, where it does not affect uh, right. people living there. So, so that's maybe the feedback that that I'm seeing. It, they, they got the next step is they got to let us know how much land they're looking for 
Where is it? Before we can make any type of a real, I saw the piece. They want some feedback before they spent twenty five hundred dollars. I saw that, but that would be right. my takeaway, Brian. But but we don't want to write an ordinance for one person. We no, want to write I, an ordinance that, that benefits either. the yeah. the township, and yeah. and that's my concern. And like I said, I was one hundred percent for this. Yeah, hundred percent. And then when I spoke to her that made logical sense. And, and Lisa might, they might experience this too. She's just an, an, you know, she represents both, I think the municipal league and her law firm does. I thought it was and, just somebody you knew in a community. Oh, no, I no, understand. No, no, no. She's, okay. she, she represents our, our insurer. And we just started talking about, I don't know how we got onto it. The, 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 the wedding barns. And she goes, Oh, mm, 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 mm. nope. You would not Pat, want that. Patty, I, I, I would like, I mean, this, because I thought it was a great idea, I would like, is there any way the our planning commission can speak to her, that she could come to a meeting at- Maybe, just, or Brian- Just, because I'd like to Brian, ask- we can get her comments. I mean, she's just, she's representing them. And then she found, you know, that they've become a nuisance for many reasons, which makes sense. I mean- I don't want to get her in trouble, but it's true. I mean, that's what she really told me. But couldn't you Mr. find Bear. a lawyer that that's going to find problems with bars, New Hudson well, Inn? I mean, you're going to find. I'm just saying that'd be pretty one-sided. If you had, if we brought someone in like that, we would need to bring someone in from the other side, showing the the positive part of it and the the benefits to the to the community. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. Yeah. Um, I agree. You know, that really shed a lot of different light on it, Patty. Um, if if this you know it's going to go to, go to uh, public hearing anyways uh, because uh, it's a text amendment is that correct Brian? So um, you know maybe the rules have to change and and uh, going forward obviously it would be up to this planning commission to send a recommendation to the board and then the board would move on it from there. But I agree with Patty that really changes my mind quite a bit. A, well, it a, did to me. I, yeah, I'm telling you, but maybe Brian could call Nancy and get some feedback from her what is working and what isn't. I mean, just orchard. You know, they were talking about the orchard. I've talked to Bill many a times, and there's gotta have a lot of many days too. Yeah, many days that he has over fifteen thousand cars, and that's that's incredible. They back up onto the highway, the noise, the accidents, the yeah. I mean. It's, it's food for Let's thought. Let's not for forget, for years, sure. he did the haunted house on the weekends till 11 mm -hmm. o'clock. I know. I used about. to hear it, though, Jim. I used to hear it at you my can. house. I believe yeah. you. I you know, believe some you. Some people might like it. Some people yeah. won't. I never complain because I, I'm I a think supporter I think of that. Spot on. We need more information. We need yeah. to see how, how big it could be. Brian can get some information from this attorney, and uh, we, we just can't. I know, just think it would good be good to check with Nancy. She had some really great comments and and remember jim this was only haunted house was only from the end of august to the oh yeah october it wasn't this even that long they didn't start it till about the first of october it was yeah weeks. and i mean you know you two weeks the, is different i get it yeah yeah so i mean this this would be constant all the time multiple things i mean it could be used for other things too like you said a community thing and there are winter weddings that use those barns too. Yeah. You know, they rent the big heaters and they have the sleigh ride there. I mean, it's very cool. Believe me, I would, I would, I'm all, I would love it. But after talking to her, it kind of changed my mind. So. Well, and I, I'll just say one thing, Patty. If we write in our ordinance, 40 acres, the structure, the insulation, sound, or whatever we have to write to make sure that we can eliminate. 70 percent of the problems right it, it would be could be amazing that's how right. i'm leaning oh. but you know let's just I write it, it in to what brian's asking us Gotta do we even have parcel. Do, do we even have any 40 acre parcels left yeah in the township There's a couple do of things. Things. yeah but not many they come with yeah. water too yeah <laughs> okay, well, I've got marching orders. I, I will bring back more information to you. Um, I tend to believe that we can we can formulate enough protective measures into something like this where we can allow for some really cool 
uh, uses that the township can be proud of while still protecting our residents. So uh, let me bring you back more information and, uh, and we'll move on from there. Sounds good. Right. Th Sounds thanks, good, Brian. thanks. Right. Thanks. All right, uh, new business AP 19-51 Lion Crossing PD Amendment, Watermark Residential Final Review, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, to date, our line crossing PD amendment, uh, we've been considering the, uh, the steps, the concept and preliminary concurrently with, between Watermark and the ZOP project. Um, uh, the folks at Watermark have made some pretty good progress and, um, and were able to get on this agenda in pretty short order. Not a lot of changes that were necessary from preliminary. Um, uh, a lot of the feedback was positive for them. Um, there weren't major issues. And so what you have in front of you um, is largely what you saw last time in terms of um, the number of units, 304 units, the number of buildings, 19 two-story buildings, all of that has remained the same. Um, the plan has been uh, <clears throat> has been fully fleshed out. If you recall, um, at the preliminary phase, um, Watermark was given um, some feedback relatively shortly before the Planning Commission meeting, and so not uh, all of the plan was able to get updated, but the, uh, the documents in front of you now are the full site plan set for the PD amendment. They do show the driveway um, up north of where it was previously. Uh, as we talked about, that change was necessary to get some separation from the traffic circle. So you do see the boulevard entrance north of, uh, of this building here. The clubhouse location has moved a little bit. Um, it's still within this larger, uh, I'm gonna continue to call it an island of residential and green space. Uh, it's just moved farther north. Um, but the changes that we do have um, tend to provide a lot more detail than what we saw at preliminary. Um, if you looked closely at the plan, things like courtyard details have been, uh, have been worked on and incorporated into the plan for both of the courtyards. Uh, you start to see the pool taking shape and some of the dog park and other pedestrian and resident amenities on the site. Uh, and so we've made good progress towards uh, solidifying those details. Um, just a couple of things of note that uh, I'd like you to like to bring your awareness to. Uh, at the board level, it was discussed that Republic owns um, this driveway and a large chunk of the property in Atchison Park um, and they really, I believe Leslie spoke with them. Um, they're really at this point against encouraging pedestrians to cross that path. It does st still get utilized for operations. And so they were, uh, they had a, a, I'll call it not positive uh, outlook on allowing that. So the change to the plan is to allow for an access easement for a future sidewalk along this very east portion of the property up to the park in the event that things change on the park property, uh, Republic stops using that driveway and we can really create a good connection between the park and Lion Center Drive. Uh, but for the time being, the sidewalk has been eliminated and, uh, and just replaced with an easement. Um, you do see on the plan um, crosswalks, connecting all of the sidewalk amenities on the site, uh, as well as connecting sidewalks along the boulevard entrances and past the other vehicular entrance over here on the east. There are some sidewalk connections um, to the main, uh, the main walk as well at each of the entrance uh, locations. The landscape plans have been modified slightly to accommodate this change in, uh, in the boulevard entrance. Um, again, they more than comply, the applicant more than complies with our landscape uh, requirements. And so we have no concerns 
with the landscaping that is proposed. Uh, <clears throat> with this information, we've all also been provided with a draft PD agreement um, that we've all been taking a look at, Lisa, myself, um, Rick, and Leslie, and uh, and the agreement is, uh, is well on its way to being acceptable to the township. Um, as it's written today, the PD amendment uh, incorporates all of the elements of the ZOT project as well. So it's, uh, it's making, uh, making the necessary adjustments to allow for residential uses for Watermark, um, but it also allows for the automobile use on the south side of the road, uh, the sidewalk that will go along Lion Center Drive, um, all of those sorts of things that we've talked about before. Um, I bring that up now because I want to note that if the approval process continues to be um, uh, staggered as it has started to be become, uh, we may uh, we may go through and update that PD agreement just to address the watermark use and address the automotive use for ZOT at a separate time. We still prefer to keep them together. Um, these things have gone through the process together. We've talked about them concurrently. They're happening uh, almost simultaneously. So our preference is to keep them together. But if in the event that uh, that timing spreads out, we don't want to be a barrier to uh, the success of this watermark project. Uh, we want to allow a PD agreement to be approved, a PD amendment to be approved for this site. Uh, if they're ready to move forward. So keep that in mind. And that's something that we can certainly review administratively, um, you know, but all of the, all of the meat is there. It would just be pulling out the pieces for the auto dealership uh, later on. Um, above and beyond that, I don't have anything to add. I believe that the, uh, the watermark development has achieved all of the goals and elements that the Planning Commission and the board have talked about up to this point. Um, we would recommend approval of the five recommendation to the Township Board of approval for the final PD for Watermark, um, subject to the continued cleanup of, uh, of that PD amendment um, and any comments from the Planning Commission this evening. Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Brian. Yes, sir, Mr. Chuck. No, that's no, uh, that Mr. 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 Radke. Radke, uh, sorry. Question for Brian. Brian, on that sidewalk that was eliminated on the east side. Brian, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yep. Was there any thought given to a pedestrian bridge like you see west of Plymouth on Sheldon? There's a couple of them uh, by our, on Eight Mile by the school for the kids to get back and forth safely over a busy road. Is there any, any idea what the cost could be for something like that there? Or is that an option? You know, it's not something that we've discussed internally or with the applicants. Um, my assumption is that's got a high price tag on it, but I, I don't know that. Okay. I've heard they're quite expensive. I don't have a dollar figure, but I heard they're, they're very expensive. I thought I was thinking the same thing, uh, Kirk, actually, but you beat me to it. Like, could we put a walkable bridge over to eliminate the potential hazard? I mean, there's a, that's a lot of, home there's a lot of home families that are going to be in there and there's a beautiful park right next door okay i'm worried about the safety brian is there a designated walkway across um uh, lion township road there isn't is there that's there's not, not our decision if you, yeah but, if you recall the um Traffic consultants, um, both because of the curve. Correct. It just it was okay. not deemed safe by both the applicants and um, GHD, who was hired on behalf of the township. I see. You know, people will be crossing anyway, but exactly, they're going to go at their own risk. And they are. They're not going to walk up to Milford Road and cross over. They're going to cut across to go to Taco Bell, 
right on the curve. <clears throat> um, uh, Rick, what do you have for us? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Not a whole lot of items this evening. We did want to touch on, uh, or Leslie wanted me to touch on the gateway treatments down at the traffic circle for pedestrian safety. We did not see that on any of the plans and, and felt that we should add that to this amendment. It should be included. And also, it, although it seems as though there is a commitment on the part of the ZOT people to complete those sidewalk gaps, I do not see that addressed in the amendment or on the plans. And I, it, it's my opinion, we should include that in both. And, and with that, I, I have no other items. And any questions okay. you might have. All right, any questions for Rick? No questions. Okay, thanks Rick. Lisa? Uh, Brian touched on some of the PD amendment issues. I've been working with the applicant on that PD amendment and we had it drafted in, in pretty good form. Uh, after that was drafted, we received the exhibit. So there'll need to be some additional tweaking um, of the language of the PD agreement to either attach the entire site plan as the exhibit or at least to make sure that it's clear that the applicant has to comply with the entire site plan that's approved and not just with the specific exhibits that are called out in the PD amendment. So we will need to do some additional adjustment with that. Um, currently, is with respect to the watermark property, uh, it requires compliance with the site plan and it requires that um, access easement to the park. Uh, so we'll need to see that easement agreement when that's put into place. If this ends up getting split from the ZOT and we end up going with two PD amendments, um, we can do that. It just, um, the, the sidewalks to the south of Lion Center Drive are really attached to the ZOT properties in that PD amendment as proposed. So if that's a concern for the planning commission, um, you know, if this watermark ends up going forward, those sidewalks to the south side of, of Lion Center aren't specifically tied to this watermark property. So, you know, if ZOT for some reason doesn't go forward, then those sidewalks aren't required anywhere. So I think that that's what Rick was referring to. And then there should also be some discussion as Rick mentioned on these traffic calming measures. Uh, currently those aren't addressed in the PD amendment and I don't think they're addressed in the site plan. So there should be some discussion on who's responsible for those and what exactly that means. That's all I have, thanks. Okay, all right, thanks, Lisa. <clears throat> um, we have someone here from Watermark, applicant. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is Tony Antone. Why don't I kick it off first hey, if I could? Okay, sure. Appreciate it. Um, thanks everyone. I, uh, I just wanted to touch on a few of these issues before I turn it over to Garrett who will have a a very brief presentation because you've you've heard this now many times over. Um, first of all, thanks to, to Lisa and to Brian. I think we are in really good shape on the document. I was gonna also recommend that if, if they appear that they're gonna be staggered that um, we've already taken a shot today, Lisa, at separating them into a fourth and fifth amendment, um, incorporating everything that's already in there into both. So we'll we'll go over those with you in the coming days uh you know just in case we can certainly take a stab at the easement to the park um i think that bill barris is probably the appropriate person to do that since he's done all the um the legal so we'll take a stab at that and show it to you for review um and then yes we we showed the exhibit um for the traffic that julie kroll had done but we'll incorporate them fully into the into the PD agreement, or into the amendments so that those are um, firmly entrenched there as well. And, and with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Garrett. All right, thanks, Tony. Good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. yes. Awesome, I'm gonna try and share my screen here. So let me know when you guys are able to see that. Got it. Awesome. 
So first off, I apologize for the lack of a camera tonight. I spilled an entire cup of coffee over my laptop on Saturday and turns out my laptop was not thirsty and it won't turn on anymore. So I have no camera. So that's saving you all from seeing my, my ugly mug tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm currently working off another machine. So I apologize in advance for any technical difficulties I may run into if I do. So uh, over the past month, we've gotten to work on the engineering design of the site and have been working with the township and staff engineering. Uh, really quick, I want to say that to date, Lyon Township staff and engineering has been great to work with. Communication has been easy, and it has been one of the best experiences that I've had as a developer working with the municipality. So I just want to say I greatly appreciate the efforts uh, you guys are putting forward and the staff and the engineering's help along the way. So appreciate that, Gary. Yeah, it's great. So as a refresher, uh, here's the plan that was last brought to Planning Commission uh, the last time we met. And really the biggest change uh, that was brought to this plan, as mentioned by Brian, was the change of access point. Additionally, we moved the buildings in the southwestern corner uh, to be further away from the home over there. And we reorganized the, the clubhouse structure in the center here. So here is the, the new plan that we've been working off of. This is a lot deeper in engineering has been designed. Um, so there's a lot more color on this plan in terms of what we're actually gonna be able to provide. So I have some comments here. I'm gonna go ahead and work my way from the top down. Let me know if you guys have any questions and you can stop me along the way. But first and foremost, we have provided a, a 10 foot sidewalk easement along the, the Northeastern portion of the site after the discussions came up with Republic that access across their road or on their property uh, would not be easy to attain. Additionally, the courtyard amenity areas are now shown. I'm going to try and zoom in here. Apologize if it's delayed. These will be fitted with fire pits, seating areas. They'll be heavily landscaped, um, professionally designed by a landscape architect. And, and they end up looking really nice. I know they don't look that way on a black and white gray plan. Um, but these are designed with pavers and hardscape and sidewalks and things like that. So they'll be quite nice amenities to have on the center of the property. Additionally, the clubhouse has been amended to better fit the drive access through our site after the traffic adjustments. So this clubhouse used to be a direct 90 degree angle here. And really all we did is we took the leasing office area and slightly bent it to better align with the road, uh, which extended the hallway in the middle, just a few feet. Next, the pool and park amenity area has been envisioned, planned out, and updated on the plan. So you can now see a, a more concrete pool design um, and hardscape layout. This hardscape will have fire pits and grills, seating areas, cabanas, all the bells and whistles that you, you heard of in our initial presentation. And the fitness center uh, is located over here to the left. Beyond that, sidewalks have been reviewed and amended by a professional landscape architect to provide better flow throughout the site, as well as crosswalks and ADA access uh, everywhere possible. And additionally, I just wanted to mention um, that a connection to the southwestern corner sidewalk has been provided. So our project will now connect to the sidewalk network that leads west, and actually I believe leads to the municipal building which will get you to Atchison Park, given that the Northeastern sidewalk does not. Mm, that's good. And I know we had mentioned there was no crossing across Line Center Drive um, along the roadway here, but at this intersection, there is a crosswalk currently shown along the roundabout, which was deemed the, the least impactful place to cross. And I believe it's already in place. So we would be tying into that. And next, I'm going to go ahead and show one of the, the clubhouse elevations just to, to show what the bend looks like in the new clubhouse. And with that, that is all of the major changes um, that have occurred within this plan. As Brian mentioned, it's more or less consistent with what had been presented in the past. And so I would be happy to take any, any questions or comments along with this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Garrett. Um, start Patricia. Um, yes. Um, 
I'm happy they got all their exhibits in. So that was a big thing we were waiting for. Um, I like all the changes. I mean, I like the project and I'm thankful for the easement. And um, I really don't have much more to ask because they've done everything we've asked them to do. Again, I, you know, I, I'm confident that they'll finish the, the sidewalk, the walkway. And um, those are my comments. All right, very good, thank you. Mr. Chuck? Nothing really, uh, only I recall when we saw some of the initial presentations, I'm not worried about what the fire pit looks like. Uh, and, and that's a compliment because I think we saw it when uh, I think you showed some pictures from someplace in Indiana and I have no doubt this is going to be top notch and uh, I'm excited and uh, I'll leave it go with that. All right, very good. Ryan. <clears throat> I agree. I like it. I, um, I still would like to see if there's anything we can do at the crosswalks to make sure it's safe for pedestrian crossing. Um, you know, I know they talked about those gateway treatments or something like that, but other than that, I really, uh, I'm still on board. Okay, excellent. Kurt? Uh, very happy. Um, that's it, it it's beautiful. Okay. That's I like, okay. they did okay. every, every I, I don't wanna be redone. I mean, they, yeah. they've done everything we've asked. Maybe we'll get a Culver's for the outlaw. <laughs> yeah, Carol Town. Hey, Tony, I didn't see that. <laughs> how about a hey, Chick Fil A built-in clientele? Jim, how about a Chick Fil A? Uh, that too. Uh, that too. But it, then you'd have traffic. Then you'd have traffic jams. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carol. Uh, Mike, yeah, um, <laughs> love, love, love. Um, turned out really spectacular. Um, I like the walkability inside. And I like that it's going to be a walkability outside. Um, and I desperately want that sidewalk included, as Rick had mentioned, um, if they're separated. And uh, to make a note of what Ron said, I agree on the gateway treatment. I'd like to have the applicant speak to the progress on the gateway treatment. Oh. Yeah. Hear it? Yes, can you guys hear me? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Sure. Yes. So I believe the last time we spoke, uh, our traffic consultant was online as well. And there was talk of certain signs. And I don't recall what their name is, so I, I apologize for that. Uh, but there was a certain sign that was mentioned that would be able to slow traffic and be able to be placed at the roundabout to kind of give it that, that treatment. And so uh, we would be willing to, to work through that and provide those, provide details on those uh, prior to the, the board meeting. That sounds really good because uh, I had mentioned that along with other commissioners that this would be uh, resolved before the final. So with your commitment to uh, have that before it goes to the board, uh, I, I hold you to your word because this is a great project um, and that's just a bit of icing on the cake. So kudos to you guys, uh, everybody involved. It's, um, it's, a, it's a sweet project. Thank you. Just a question, Mr. Chairman, maybe please, one of my please. colleagues knows or Tony or, or Garrett, um, is that similar to what we have at Napier and 10 Mile where pedestrian, they have lights, you push a button and it, it's a warning. Is that kind of what we're talking about i think so i don't I, I, I do not believe so so the the gateway treatment and the signs that we had discussed with our traffic consultant uh they, they were not electronic uh, they were more reflective in the ground type signs so all right i, I, I do not believe they would be curious. you know a hawk signal i think it's got a nice system the down there at 10 and napier and i was curious if it was similar but uh i'm sure it'll uh do the job so thank you Okay, great. Uh, many positive comments. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, you need someone an can make an, I'll, I'll take make a, a motion. Okay, a motion for um, make a motion to approval. Approve. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, please. Make a motion to approve AP 19 51 line crossing plan development amendment based on the comments from our Rick Miner. Lisa, our attorney, uh, regarding the gateway, traffic calming measures, the sidewalks, um, 
And Kirk, the letters are July 9th from McKenna and CES. I actually wrote them down if you want to include that. Th yep. Thank you, sir. Yep. McKenna letter dated, dated July 9th, 20, and the CES letter dated, dated July 9th. Recommend approval so to the board. That's okay. all, is that all contingent upon then the, the draft PD agreement? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Could we could we um could we say in there that um it'll be up to the township attorney or staff if we have to separate them to you know as long as we cover all the details um we just don't want to have to come back to planning if we right. if we keep all the okay could you add that in there Kurt sure well and I think the the PDMM and actually has to go to the board for approval um, mm -hmm. So I think we can make it contingent upon approval by the township attorney and the township board. So. Perfect. Okay, I would agree to that in my motion. And I'll support the motion. Okay, we have motion and support. Any other comments? Okay, Kelly, if you take roll, please. Chair Ron Pennington? Yes. Kurt Radke? Yes. Michael Confitti? Yes. Carl Town? Yes. Jim Chuck? Yes. Patricia Carcone. Yes. All right. Congratulations. A nice project. Hey, th thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Great too. project. Bye, bye Thanks, Garrett, for the kind words. Thank you. Take yes, care, guys. Yes. Bye now. Bye. Patricia C., do you have a report for us? Yes. I Let me get to my... Did we my skip little... one, Mr. Chairman? Did we? <laughs> yeah, maybe we skipped it on purpose. It's after 9 o'clock. <laughs> Where do I start? Hey, it's getting dark out here. I'm not playing cards tonight, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I don't care. We can skip it. <laughs> Wait, what, we move did, that what, uh, number five to. Uh, can we move that to a number later five. date? We've skipped Mine doesn't, five, have, Mr. Mine doesn't have a number five. Well, there's a bunch of district there. lot with with setback amendments. That's what mine has. Uh, Dude, mine doesn't have that. Oh, I got the revised. Uh, uh huh. Oh, that's sure. That. Uh huh. Well, I guess we go to. Okay. Miss Patty. Can we push that, Mr. All Chair? Right. Can we push that to the next meeting? Sure. Why not? Brian, Plus, is this more an than, objection? I don't think. I don't think is it's this a problem. More than Brian? Just a discussion, Brian. This is just an introduction discussion based on um, some changes that we're going to need to address here in in the very near future. So. Can you make uh, it to the next meeting? Yep. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. All right. That'd be my motion. Well, I'll see you the next meeting. And Mr. Chuck, support. Okay, uh, Kelly, take roll. Sure. Uh, Jim Chuck? Yes. Ram Pennington? Yes. Michael Confetti? Yes. Carl Town? Yes. Patricia Carconi? Yes. Kurt Radke? Yes. All right. Sorry, Patty, go. Oh, no, go that's ahead. okay. Okay, we had our board meeting on July 6th. It was kind of another long board meeting. So under um, unfinished business, we had the consideration and adoption of the um, ordinance for the Charter Township of Lyon, New Hudson lot with lot coverage regulations. We had the consideration and adoption of an amendatory ordinance for solar energy systems. We had both of those and those were approved. Then we went to new business and we had a, a very long discussion about the DD, DDT3, which was Amazon special land use. And um, it did pass, but by the skin of our teeth um, for the phase two, we had a very long discussion on the Wallbridge spec building and the board made them have an eight foot sidewalk on the uh, east side. They were not happy with the with the five foot. So just to let you know. Um, but they did approve it. Uh, we had uh, the private road ordinance and the zoning um, ordinance text amendments. I think those were I think they were, those were, were those first readings, Brian. Right, yeah. And then uh, we had the private road and we had the sign, the sign ordinance, right? Township of light. 
Yeah, signs and, and private roads, both were first readings because they're pretty thick, you know, we, we did them. So um, we had a discussion on the DDA core parcels for connection to sewer with a special assessment district. So what's going on with that is we have some people, some businesses in the downtown area that desperately need to hook up to the sewer. And it's so expensive for these small businesses that the board is going to consider putting together a special assessment district and probably either borrowing or bonding for the money and they the businesses can pay us over a period of time. So Leslie's gonna work on that uh, probably with Carol's office too. And I think that's gonna be very good for those small businesses, you know, the, the, um, the, um, Oh, who does our, the health department, they are not willing to let people, you know, use their septic tanks anymore. They really want to get away from that because so bad for the environment. So I think this could be a really good thing for our small businesses. So the board is going to work, let Leslie and I and Lisa and them work on that. We had uh, the consideration of request for the permit for the fireworks display at Walnut Creek. We kind of tabled that, not, we had some dates were mixed up. And so anyways, the fire department came in to see me and they're, they're gonna figure it out because there are state regulations and our regulations and um, it's different for businesses as it is to um, individuals. So they're gonna work that out with Walnut Creek. We had um, some temporary outdoor sales event authorizations allowing bars and restaurants to put temporary um, um, barriers and some things so that they can move outside so it helps them. So we passed that. It's, it's just going to give them some temporary ability to open and be outside so they can run their businesses. We had uh, the consideration of a survey for the park and recreation. We agreed to that. And we had some discussion on resurfacing the Huron Valley Trail. As you know, we applied for a grant, a matching grant, which we agreed to put up 50%. It was a brand new grant that just took place this year. And unfortunately we were not uh, successful in getting it, but we're not disappointed, we're not, going to give up on it. Um, but we did give Leslie's uh, firm the opportunity to maybe break the trail up in maybe three sections. And since we already had money in the budget this year, we we're thinking about getting a section of it paved or re redone. And then next year apply for the grant again. And if we, we might get it, we might get to do that section or the other two sections. And this way we can at least start doing that and with everything with COVID and people outside with their kids and bike sales, the path, our path has been very popular and we wanna, we need to get it taken care of. So I'm very, very pleased that the board um, uh, went for that and that Leslie's gonna bring us back some quotes and that will come before the board. So I made that kind of short, but that's our, that was our meeting. Okay, very good, thank you. Thanks, Patty. Welcome. Um, Brian, did you have anything? Almost made it through without mute. Um, I have nothing else to add this evening. Okay, thank you. Patty, do you know for the election? Yes. Um, uh, what is it? August, the uh, primaries, August, what, 4th? 4th. 4th. Fourth. And the township's going to be open. How are they yep. going to handle that? Yep. Anything special? Um, as far well, as we're actually open to the public now, we just didn't do an announcement. We did kind of a soft opening, so people have been coming in and paying their taxes. We've we've got the um, we've got the glass all along the front, and uh, we ask people to respect and wear a mask inside. Uh, Carol says that we can. Um, enforce that, but people have been really good. Um, we're keeping them six feet apart in the front. We have all our little steps. So people are bringing their absentee ballots and that 
we ask them if they don't have to come inside, if they don't, could they just mm -hmm. put it in the drop box? And we, people have been really great about it, but we're still there. We're still at your service. Yeah. What anybody needs, we're happy to help anybody. And uh, Michelle's working on the election, the logistics of all of it. I think right. she's working with the state of Michigan and Oakland County. Okay. All right. We're good. Thank you. Working on getting election workers. I know Carl is. She's happy about that. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. One last motion. Motion to adjourn. Support. Uh, okay, Kelly, take take roll on that, would you please? Sure. <laughs> Use your best estimate, your best guess. Patricia <laughs> Carcone. Yes. yes. Jim Chuck. Yes. Michael Confliti. Yes, please. John Pennington. Yes. Kurt Reiki. Yes. Carl Town. Yes. All right. Good job. Good night, Carl, everybody. Who knows where you're at, but thank Bye. you. Bye. We're good getting pretty good at this. Bye. Yes. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Two, two weeks. See everyone in two okay. weeks. Thanks, Ken. Ken, can, are we off? Are we, sh are we shut down? I got to look at my.